And thanks for tuning in to Morning Live. Now, the North Gauteng High Court has ruled that the an organization undoing tax abuse, or AUTA, be part of the application to declare former SAA board chairperson Dudu Munyeni a delinquent director. AUTA joined the SAA Pilots Association in 2017 in taking this matter to court. Munyeni yesterday failed in her attempts to remove AUTA from the case, arguing that it's a civil society organization and is not directly affected by SAA. Affairs. And with us now is Advocate Stefani Fick, who is Outer's Chief Legal Officer. Uh, thanks so much for coming through. Good to see you again. Good morning. Thank you very much. So, if you could just, uh, Stefani, start by just explaining to us, you know, what this latest ruling actually means. Well, I think it's, it's, it's just good news. Um, obviously, it's very good news for us as an organization. But <clears throat> we also feel that. You know, I think civil society has been vindicated. We agree with the court that cases like this is in the it it it, it, it is always in the public's interest, and that the, the the issues that's before court, we agree with the court saying it's also in the interest of justice um, um, for matters like this to be brought by organisations like us who brings these type of cases on behalf of the public. Of course the public has got an interest in an SOE as big as the SAA. Of course, because we, you know, we, we're taxpayers. We, we sort of fund some of the funds that goes to um, um, these SOEs. Of course, we have an interest. Mm. And we were vindicated by the court yesterday. So it also raises the question once again about the role of uh, directors who sit on the boards, not only of SOEs, but of companies in general, yes. but especially uh, when it comes to the SOEs, given the dire financial situations they find themselves in right now. Yes, and that's the, 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 the big part of this, why this case is so important, is hopefully at the end of this, we will say, but watch out, you have a, you have a very important duty when you sit on a board and that you have an important duty to look at the governance of our SOEs. We as South Africans look up to the boards and, and you know, expect them to lo look after, I want to say, our affairs. And that if something goes wrong, we are where we are today. Corruption is, 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 is an illness. And, you know, what we've been talking about load shedding. But what has caused lodging? Various reasons, but one of the reasons are definitely corruption and maladministration. That South Africans today are suffering because of corruption and maladministration. And that's why an organization like us, ALTA, brings applications like this. Of course, uh, we, we obviously think that SAA should have brought this against their own directors. But if they're not going to do it, yesterday, us as an organization and South Africans were vindicated. Yes, we can, if no one else is going to hold you to account, we will. But why is it that um, the directors who sit on these boards have been allowed to basically just get away with not being accountable? Because in as much as we see CEOs and other executives being fired, the boards never seem to be implicated in any way. And the boards are extremely important. And hopefully we're moving in the right direction. But what we've seen with state capture is that there were big problems with, with boards. Ultimately, the board is there for oversight. And the board is there to make sure that a company is run correctly. That, it, Like I've already stated, good governance. And if that fails... We sit where we are today. Um, so why wasn't there any, you know, accountability? Good question. And that's why we're here. That's why we can say, you know, congratulations to South Africans and our supporters. Without you, we wouldn't have been able to take this next step in order to bring a case like this. And, mm -hmm. you know, join us because you will have an opportunity to be part of something as important as this. And I think that's the importance because this is precedent setting. Yes. And, and one would imagine that this could possibly potentially open the door for other directors who sat and uh, who were basically, um, you know, complicit in the running down of these state-owned enterprises because 
when did these boards raise the alarm in terms of their oversight? Exactly. And, 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 and if you want to look at whistleblowers, you know, how many whistleblowers dare to say something and is now bearing the brunt of, you know, some of them are with our jobs, specifically with the SAA matter. Um, we were very lucky that we were approached by whistleblowers because maybe then we wouldn't have had the, the opportunity to bring this case if it wasn't for them, if it wasn't for their courage. Um, we wouldn't be here. So, you know, thank you to the whistleblowers that had courage to stand up. But I want to say, watch out to the ones that are still there. We will eventually, we'll come for you. South Africans will hold you to account for the absolute disaster because of, of corruption and maladministration in this country. We are hurting. Um, you know, as South Africans, we are hurting because of all the corruption and maladministration. So, so, so Stefani, you're saying that this is just the beginning, that as yes. Alta, you do intend going after more directors yes. who sat on these yes. boards. Of course, we would like to go after each and every one. Each and every one that's responsible for the demise of our very precious, actually, um, SOEs. Unfortunately, um, we are very proudly crowdfunded, so we want to thank each and every supporter. But we need more. The more support we have, the more we can do. And yes, I agree with you. We would like to go after each and every, because each and every one should be held accountable for, for the damages that was caused to South Africa. So speaking to the case in point now, Dudu um, what next for her? What's going to happen legally? Well, legally, hopefully, and this is all we hope for, is in January we will now start with the trial. We will start with the merits. We will present our facts and they will obviously have an opportunity to you know, cross-examine witnesses and bring um, um, to the court their case. So we're looking forward to it. I mean, we, um, um, although we won, um, uh, like I've already stated, I think, um, you know, South Africans got a has a voice, or have a voice. Their voice just got louder um, yesterday. So now we fight, we fight hard, and we're looking forward to it. But it's good news. I think we've sort of ended off um, 2019 with a little bit of good news. And I think we're all looking in the darkness, looking for a little bit of, of good news. And how far South Africa? So... What happens in the event that Dudumieni is declared a delinquent, a delinquent director? Well, to be a bit philosophical, hopefully that will send a message to all the other directors on SOE boards. Maybe you, you are next. We will hold you accountable. But what it means in law is that she will not be able to sit on, on, on a board. Um, for um, you know, whatever amount of years the court decide, the, the maximum is seven years, which means that she will not be able to be part of a board, be part of the governance, be part of the people that's supposed to look after, um, and, and especially an SOE, um, she will not be able to sit on a board. And uh, part of that um, case also involved an application to have other former SAA members yes. um, uh, uh, drawn into this yes. particular case by yes. Dudumieni. So um, that obviously failed. But what's the relevance, you know, more broadly speaking, of that aspect of the case? In this particular matter, if, if the, the, the facts that we're going to present, um, um, unfortunately, only implicates you know, the, the one person and specifically indicates the chairperson of this specific board. Now, if you're asking me whether there should be more directors, not only in SAA, but in all the other SAEs, yes, of course, there should be. But in, 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 in what we allege in this specific case is very limited and it's very limited towards the one person. So what about government's role? Because, you know, when these... Uh, directors are appointed to these boards, they are appointed uh, by the shareholder. Yes. What is the shareholder's responsibility in terms of making sure that people actually do their jobs when they serve on these boards? 
gr agree with you wholeheartedly. Where was the accountability from, you know, from, from, from the next level of, of, of account, you know, people that should be held accountable? We should be very careful when we look at who do we appoint. Um, um, I always think that we have a generation of young people currently in university who looks up to leadership and maybe say that one day I want to make a difference, I want to go to government. But what message has, you know, are we sending to them is that you go, you know, you go on a board and then, you know, an SOE falls apart. There should be, you know, you should be proud to be on a board. You should be proud to make sure that a, a government institution is run properly. And then also that if you, you know, commit corruption, if you commit maladministration, that, they, that there's going to be consequences. And I think that has been lacking. Mm. And that's why we're here. That's why, uh, you know, civil society stepped to the fore and said, but if, if, if you're not going to, you know, if government is not going to hold uh, to account the people that's put in these positions, civil society has to. One of the other noteworthy things with regard to the directors who serve, especially on the boards of state-owned enterprises, is one sees almost a recycling or, or, of people. There are people who have served on the boards of many SOEs and they just seem to be moved from one to the next. What's your view on that? Um, if, 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 if you are asking me whether the, it's wrong for one person to sit on um, w w more than one board, no, because there's a lot of people that that's what they do. They sit on boards of directors. If you are asking me whether if a person is struggling or commits some kind of you know, offense or um, commits some you know, misstep, is then moved to a different board, that should not happen. I cannot believe that, um, you know, with, with, with the amount of professionals that's out there, that you cannot um, find the right person for the right position that will actually take pride in the fact that they are leading a very important SOE. Mm. So getting back to Judy um, uh, is she allowed to appeal yesterday's decision? It, uh, uh, no. It is an interlocutory application, and um, in, in, in law, it's very difficult to appeal an interlocutory because, because it's, not a, it's not a final decision. I mean, we haven't gotten to the, to the fact yet. Um, what happened yesterday and uh, the dismissal of the applications doesn't mean that Dudu Mignani lost her case. Only when she's lost her case uh, at the end of a matter, um, um, she would be able to appeal it. Um, let's just put it on its head. For example, if we lost yesterday and the court said, no, we cannot be part of the matter, that would have been the end for us. That we would have appealed. So it's all about the finality of, of, of the order. And that um, what happened with the amendment application and joined the application, it's not really final. We will still get into the merit and um, um, obviously um, Ms. Mieni will still have an opportunity to defend whatever allegations we put forward. Mm. And with regard to the, uh, what some have labeled as delay tactics uh, going on in this particular matter, um, what's your take on that and do you anticipate more of that going forward? Well, hopefully not. I think um, we all just want to continue with this matter so that we can get finality. The longer this drags on, um, I mean, Ms. Mieni already stated um, in, in, in terms of media reports that she doesn't have money. So let's Let's get to court and let's get um, this matter um, finalized. Um, to be fair, in civil procedure, you have a, you know, you have in terms of rules, you can bring um, a, a number of applications. So that is not uncommon in, 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 in civil um, litigation to bring these types of, of um, applications. The only worry that we had is that it was brought so late. I mean, we've already received um, our trial dates nearly a year and a half, two years ago. So we were just concerned that it was brought very last minute. But of course, yesterday we were awarded wasted costs. So now we can move on. We can move on, get to the merits and actually get to, if you want to call it, the real fight and get to the nitty gritty. And uh, speaking of the role of civil society and, of course, the public at large in matters such as these, um, one would imagine that this was a, a great victory uh, yes. for society. Yes. But going forward, you know, how do you best think this could be leveraged upon? 
Well, I think it opened the door. I, I, I think, um, firstly, I have to say that I think um, our constitution was vindicated because the company law was sort of interpreted with our constitution. We are very proud of our, I think we're all very proud of our constitution. Big win for our constitution. Big win for the interest of justice. And a big win for civil society and organizations like us. It opens the door f um, and, and, and it gives confidence to us as civil society that know that we can bring these types of cases on behalf of the public interest. The public interest in SOE's state-owned entities were confirmed yesterday. Yes, we do have a say as to um, how they spend our money as South Africans. And that was confirmed yesterday. And um, a hypothetical question to end it off with. This is a case involving Dudu Mieni. Yes. If Atta had to go after another director after Dudu Mieni, who would you go for? I think one of the biggest problems is, 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 is ESCOM. Um, but ESCOM is only a big problem because we, we, we feel it. We feel it. We, we, we live in the, in, in, in the darkness. Um, so my, my, my first response would be ESCOM and all the directors that's responsible for whatever, the, all the corruption and maladministration that w went on there. But caution, and, 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 and I think a lot of our SOEs are in trouble. And we tend to forget the smaller ones. Mm. And, you know, for example, the now. And all of the SOEs have an impact. All of the state-owned entities uses taxpayers' money. All of the uh, um, uh, state-owned entities are in dire financial straits. And all of that comes back to the effects of corruption on each and every one of us. So if Alta had the financial muscle, the financial wherewithal, would you take on all of them? Yes, I think, I think I have a whole, whole office that if they hear this will jump up and scream yes tomorrow. Well, let's see how this one plays out, uh, the one that you're dealing with currently. But thanks so much uh, for speaking to us this morning. Um, uh, thanks to Advocate Stefani Fick from Alta for talking to us about the North Harteng High Court ruling uh, in their favor to bring an application to declare Dudumieni a delinquent director. Uh, she, of course, was the former SAA board chairperson. And uh, we're going to take a break. And on the other side of that, we'll bring you our latest news bulletin.